4.1 graph quadratic functions in standard form. I've got to say that this comic is a little bit appropriate for the lesson today. Some of what I'm going to say is just not going to make total sense right now. We're going to work through it in class and this whole chapter is about quadratics and we have a lot more to say about it. A quadratic function is a function that can be written as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. a cannot equal 0 in this case because then it would just be a linear function. And we call this a graph of a parabola. And this is a graph of a parabola. The parent function in the most simplest form, we have y or f of x equals x squared. And this is the graph of y equals x squared right here. And the vertex, which in this case is the lowest point on the graph, is just at 0, 0. And our axis of symmetry is just at x equals 0, because this is a line x equals 0. And we call that our axis of symmetry. So let's start by graphing y equals 1 half x squared. Much like when we were doing our absolute value graphs, we're going to compare this with just the parent function. And just like we had the factor of vertical shrink or stretch, this one half is going to indicate that my graph is wider than y equals x squared was. Let's just go ahead and graph some points. I'm going to just start with giving you a table of values. And let's just do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So if we put negative 2 in here, we start with exponents first. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, and 1 half times 4 is 2. Put in negative 1. Negative 1, the quantity squared, is positive 1 times 1 half is 1 half. Put in 0, you get out 0. Well, putting in a positive 1 is going to be the same as the negative 1, of course, because 1 squared is the 1, and times 1 half is 1 half. And then you put in the 2, and you get out the same value as you got there. And so the graph will be right here as our vertex. Negative 1, 1 half. Positive 1, 1 half. And then 2, 2. 2, 2. And so you'll see that's why we call this our axis of symmetry. And our parabola just looks like that. So in this case, we have both of these graphs. Open up and have the same vertex and axis of symmetry. The thing that's different is that y equals 1 half x squared is wider than y equals x squared. y equals x squared, just so you can see, that would have looked like 0, 0, put in a 1, we would have gotten out a 1, put in a 2, we would have gotten out 2 squared, which is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing over here. And so you'll see that So you'll see that y equals 1 half x squared is wider 
then y equals x squared. If I asked you to compare, you do not need to draw both graphs once you know what y equals x squared looks like. Let's go ahead and graph y equals negative 2x squared plus 5. I'm going to start out again with the table of values. I'm just going to pick the same x values that I did last time. So when I put in negative 2, I get negative 2 times negative 2, the quantity squared is 4, plus 5, which equals negative 8 plus 5, which is negative 3. When I put in negative 1, I get negative 2 times negative 1, the quantity squared is just 1, plus 5, which is negative 2 plus 5, or positive 3. Oops. When I put in a 0, I get negative 2 times 0 plus 5, which is 5. When I put in a 1, let's see what I get, negative 2 times 1 plus 5, which is 5 minus 2, which is positive 3. And when I put in a 2, I get negative 2 times 2 squared, or 4, plus 5 which is the same negative 8 plus 5, or negative 3. So yet again, I see that this x equals 0 is going to be my axis of symmetry, because I see symmetry over there. And so let's plot this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 1, 2, 3, and negative 1, 3 and then 2, 1, 2, 3. And so I see now that I have the same axis of symmetry, but again, my graph here now is reflected and scooted up, and it's skinnier. So again, both graphs, what they have the same. Vertex and axis of symmetry. But what's not the same is y equals negative 2x squared plus 5 opens down is narrower, its vertex is 5 units up. So just in general, when we have any graph of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, if a is greater than 0, we know the parabola opens up. If a is less than 0, we know that the parabola opens down. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, and I stress this absolute value because remember, like when I go back here, for example, I want to be looking at this 2 to indicate if it is narrower or wider. The negative only indicates if it opens up or if it opens down. So that's why we want to look at the absolute value of a, because we just want to look at that number right there. And so this indicates if it's greater than 1, that'll be like this case. Less than 1, it's like this case where it was wider. So less than 1 was wider. And this case was narrower. And that's just because the y values are going up faster than they were in y equals x squared because we're multiplying it by some number bigger than 1. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative b over 2a. For now, just write this down on your paper. We'll be discussing a lot more about how you get there. But for now, just write it on your paper. The x-coordinate of the vertex is just going to be this negative b over 2a. Because if my axis is symmetry, 
is negative b over 2a, so that's where I'm saying that it is kind of centered, you know, it goes this way and this way, then my vertex, that x-coordinate, is going to be that same negative b over 2a, comma, something. The y-intercept is just going to be the value of c, of course, because the y-intercept means let x be 0, so I get 0 plus 0 plus c, and so that means if the y-intercept is c, that means that 0 c is some point on the parabola because the y-intercept means let x be 0. Now let's graph y equals negative x squared plus 3x minus 4. Let's start by looking for the vertex. Well, we just found in the other slide that the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative b over 2a. So what is our, our a in this case is negative 1, our b is 3, and our c is negative 4. And so our negative b would be negative 3 over 2 times negative 1. In other words, 3 over 2. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we just have to go ahead and put that x-coordinate into our equation. And so the y-coordinate means find what y is when x equals 3 halves. And so we get y equals negative 3 halves squared plus 3 times 3 halves minus 4, which equals negative 9 fourths plus 9 halves minus 4 which is going to equal negative 7 fourths. In other words, our vertex is 3 halves negative 7 fourths. Our y-intercept is just going to be negative 4, 0 plus 0 minus 4, and we need some other point. So let's just let x be 1 for this some other point. Let's see what the point is. So if x is 1, then we get y equals 1, negative 1 squared, sorry, plus 3 times 1 minus 4, which is negative 1 plus 3 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. So our point is 1, negative 2. This point right here, that's our y-intercept, so that point is 0, negative 4. So we have a bunch of points here. Let's start with the three halves, that's one and a half, and then negative seven fourths, and that's negative 1.75, so right there. This is also our axis of symmetry, so everything's going to be symmetric over there. Um, our y-intercept is zero, negative four, one, two, three, four, Okay, so that means since this is our axis of symmetry, since we went over one and a half here, if I go over one and a half units here, that should be a point also, you see, because that's our axis of symmetry there. And then some other point I had was one, negative two, and since, again, this is our axis of symmetry, I can just do it over there, and then my graph should look like that. Okay, so what do we know about minimums and maximums? Well, if A is greater than zero, I know that my graph is opening up. And so if A is greater than zero, it means that our vertex is going to be a minimum value. Conversely, if a is less than 0, it means that my parabola is opening down, and that means that my vertex is going to be the maximum.
finally, let's tell whether y equals negative 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 has a minimum or maximum and find that value. So we automatically know that since this is a negative, that our parabola is opening down. And so our vertex is going to be at the maximum point since it's opening down. It means that our vertex is going to be a maximum. Again, the vertex, the x-coordinate of the vertex is just that negative b over 2a. In this example, a is negative 3, b is 7, and c is 2. And so the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative b over 2a. In other words, negative 7 over negative 6, or 7 sixths. We have to find the y-coordinate if x equals 7 sixths. So y equals negative 3 times 7 over 6 squared plus 7 times 7 over 6 plus 2. I'm going to just put this in my calculator and I would get 6.083 and so the maximum is going to be at 7 sixths 6.083. And before I close this lesson I just want to quickly show you how you would do this on your calculator. So let's go ahead and first put this in our y equals. So press the y equals button and go to negative. You have to use this negative sign. This is for minus, so make sure you use negative 3x squared. I always use this button for my x plus 7x plus 2. And now we can just graph it. If your window doesn't look right, zoom standard, which is 6, is always a good bet for getting back to a normal window. And so this is our maximum point that we want to find. We can go to second calc, just like we did to find the intersection points, and find the maximum. So that's number 4. And in order to use this, it will first ask you for the left bound. The left bound means go a little bit to the left, so we think that the maximum is right here, and the left bound would mean go a little bit to the left of it. So you use just your left and right arrows again, so right, right here I think is left bound. And so I press enter, then it says right bound, that means go a little bit to the right of the point. Again, the points that go about there, so a little bit to the right would be maybe right there. Press enter. And then guess, go right on the point that you think it is. I think that's the maximum. Press enter again. And then it says that our maximum, and that's the same thing we found, 76 is 1.166 repeating, and our y coordinate was 6.083. So that's how I could find my max and min to check it on my calculator. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.